Okay, uh, so we just got more, um, well not more, we just like, they revealed um, Bellion and her kit to us and, and what, what's going on with her. Uh, I know some people are kind of annoyed by certain things. Um, we'll kind of go over some of it. Uh, obviously I don't spend too much time like in major discords, I'm only in my guild discord and my guild discord is like half absent. There's only like the same three people talking all the time. Uh, so, but I hear, you know, in general, like some people are kind of annoyed by what's going on with her. Um, so we're going to take a look at her. Uh, this isn't the first time I see her. I've already kind of, usually when I do this, I like to like not watch anything and then and talk about it. But I just kind of was like, well, we'll see whatever. Um, but yeah, so we're going to kind of go over her kit and, and what's going on with her and um, what you would want to do with her. Uh, as well as, yeah, just, I mean, whether she's worth pulling. Um, so... Firstly, let's, let's kind of look here. I guess we can just play Everything this. Alicia this is kind of loud for me. My control. I won't waste my breath. <laughs> Her voice actor sounds pretty cool. Um, for for one, uh, I was hoping she was next, but I didn't think she was like she was she was shown, um, and I kind of thought it like from the, we saw that skill three animation. And from what I saw the, f the first time I saw that uh, back when they were revealing like a bunch of little like snippets of, of future hero future heroes coming, I it looked to me the way it looked to a lot of people that that was like ML Politis and it's she still looks like ML Politis, um, so I that you know I was like I saw that and I was like oh ML Politis is next and then um, maybe hopefully and we'll we'll see where we go from there but uh, then we found out later in the story that she's just the the final boss so she's she's Bellion. Um, and then, you know, I, I thought originally it was like, oh, we're not going to get her because it took, you know, how long did it take to get Archdemon Mercedes? Um, how long how long did it take to get Strays? But, you know, here they're on top of their game. Episode 3 comes out, completes itself, and uh, we, we get the, the boss right right then and there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is Bellion. I, I do wonder if she's going to be like Strays or she's going to have like... Is she, can, can we... Is she... Can we use Politis to merge her up? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, they, I, maybe in the story they're hinted like Politis becomes her because they look very much similar. And she says she says right there she's an AI, so maybe Politis is like some sort of computer as well. But I have no idea. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, she just looks a lot like her, and I just kind of hope you you know they're related in some way, but probably not. Uh, so the first thing people were kind of annoyed about was that she's a knight, even though she looks kind of like a mage, but. I kind of wanted that. And I was talking about this in the Discord before this happened. Was like, it'd be nice to have like some sort of like crossover. This is obviously she's just a knight, uh, but it'd be nice to have some sort of like uh, crossover classes, right? So like some sort of knight mage, um, or like knight warrior, or uh, not knight, yeah, knight mage or mage warrior or something like that. Um, kind of like if like what if in the future we have units that are like light and dark or like fire and water or something. Uh, it'd be kind of interesting to see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, obviously they don't double class her, but she kind of just has a bunch of mage skills and is very mage-like. Uh, she's just going to have tank stats, so we'll see We'll see what that looks like when we get in there. Um, so yeah. A lot of people were thinking she was going to come out to counter um, New Angelica, but uh, it's looking like she's not. Look, it says right there, she looks... How do I, why are these captions on? I have no idea. Oh, she was made by Politis. It's kind of weird. Uh, okay, so there you go. There's some story why she looks like her. Uh, I guess we're not going to be able to merge her up. It's kind of annoying getting a lot of these, like... I mean, it's not a lot, but Archdemon, Strays, and now probably her. That's three ML units that are going to require their own imprints. Now, a lot of, a lot of people think that they're, it's usually better when they're, like, Strays, because then you just spend um, your gold transmits. And that's usually for, like, higher-end people. Um, because they just have so many gold transmits and usually like they're not going to summon for anything anyway because they're not going to get anything out of it. Uh, but it's kind of annoying for the rest of us um, who have like, you know, stocked up a bunch of like five stars and it's just like, well, okay. Uh, but yeah, so here we are. Um, she's kind of interesting. She's she's obviously got low attack, uh, tank stats, so health and, and, and defense are pretty high. Uh, she's got effectiveness, and fortunately she doesn't have any wasted effect resistance, so I mean you can probably build some sort of weird effect resistance version for whatever reason. Um, but like, it, it just kind of annoyed me because if you look at um, New Angelica, she has effectiveness and effect resistance, which is like, thanks, you could have just dumped all that effect resistance into the effectiveness for me or something, but I guess not. 
Um, but yeah, so we're taking a look at the, the, the stats here. Obviously, she, she's theoretically not going to do a whole lot of damage, but as we'll find out later, she does have uh, health scaling. Um, so just kind of like don't, just ignore, I mean, just ignore the attack, I think, and, and build mostly health. Um, speed's kind of slow, obviously. I don't, you know, she's not supposed to be fast. Uh, let's kind of go forward. So her self imprints health, which is pretty good because obviously you want to stack up a bunch of health. Uh, so this is so we're taking a look at this here. The first skill is 100% chance. This, this skill is kind of underwhelming. Um. So let, let's talk about why it's underwhelming. For one, at the start of the turn, she has a 100% chance. Not even like you have to spend molas to get her to 100% chance to get a random buff. It's like for one turn, not even two turns for one turn. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, like this, this second part here is excessively just kind of a waste. Like they didn't want to release a unit that just says you can't get souls and that's it. Right. They're like, oh, let's just tack something else on there. And they added this. And then the, to add injury to insult, they also gave her critical hit chance, which is a waste of everyone's time because the critical hit chance, uh, if you're building her for crit, because she's this health scaling, uh, you're not going to build her with 50% crit and hope you get lucky 33% on turn one, right? So that's kind of, I don't know, that's kind of an insult, I think, to, to a lot of people. Um, anyone anyone who wants to use her, it's just kind of a slap in the face that, like, here's a crit chance buff. It's kind of worthless. Like, crit chance buff is just, like, probably the most worthless buff in the game, except for people who can just, like, consistently give it to themselves. So if you have... Something like C-Dom. C-Dom is incredibly strong because it lets you just dump everything into crit damage and then she's going to give herself crit chance. So there you go. You're fine. Um, but yeah, so this this right here is garbage. The effectiveness is decent um, because obviously her main job is just going to be to like a lot of CC. Uh, and then finally the continuous healing is good because if she's going to be slower, she's going to take a bunch of damage and then she's going to eventually take her turn. 15% health regeneration is not is not bad, but again, like, to, are you gonna spend Mola to get 15% health back, to possibly one third of a chance get 50% health back, or possibly get 50 more uh, effectiveness? And this, I feel like they're gonna buff this before she comes out, or at, or at some point, and they're just gonna make this critical hit damage because there really isn't anything else to put. And you're not even have you don't even have it for two turns is the problem, right? So she's gonna start with critical hit damage, maybe get one counter off, and then. It'll be her turn. She's gonna do her S three, and then that's it. It's gone, and it's not even like she she's not gonna cleave an entire team with a crit buff, right? Like, especially when it's only thirty three percent of the time. I just I can't fathom how like unbelievably dumb this entire thing is. And then on top of that, so that that's that's this stuff here. This second line here is the we tacked it on because the first line looks stupid as it is. But so we look at the first line, and the first line talks about um. You don't increase souls as you as you battle now because of her. Uh, for one, this isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's not as dumb as like you want to. I'm trying to make it out to be, but um, for one, if it doesn't, the only thing, the only reason, the only soul burn, the only thing preventing souls is going to helpful is going to help with is with all the Tiger Hells tomes running around, right? Um, yeah, with all those running around, everyone, oh, everyone's on book, and you know they start off with 20, 40 souls. This is the only combating that is the only problem. Like soul gain has never been such a big problem that we need to stop it in some way. Like look at look at um, Tywin, right? Like Tywin, a, a Tywin's S one reduces four souls. I mean that's nice to have, um, especially in RTA where it's like oh you know maybe I, I didn't get the soul burn because of whatever reason. Um, but that's not really like no one cares about that, right? The only reason Acid's soul reduction matters is because he drops 20 souls, which means he makes your entire book irrelevant on turn one, right? So that's kind of like, I don't know, because like, like they said, I think, I don't know if they say it here, but at some point it was it was said that uh, it doesn't affect Taga Hell's like soul gain at the beginning. Um, so that's kind of like, like, who is playing this game running around complaining that soul burns are too strong and people are stacking souls too much? Uh, that we need to release a unit that counters that because it's not countering Tiger Hells because people are complaining about Tiger Hells because everyone's on Tiger Hells and everyone's, you know, turn one soul burning everything all the time. Um, so that's the problem. But like regular soul gain, no one has ever said anything bad or like complained about regular soul gain. That's all this is targeting if, you know, um, if that's the case. And I think maybe they might patch it to make it counter the Tiger Hells, in which case then she'll be pretty strong because in the meta, some of the strongest units are all just running around on that book and 
first turn soul burns are pretty strong for a lot of units. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it, it just, like I said, th this entire thing, it's not like the worst passive I've ever seen, but it's also just kind of dumb. Like, take, 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 for example, like, it, it, it's kind of on the same level of like, what's her name? Solitaria with her little, like, um, stopping the focus or whatever. I, I think it's focus. Is it focus? Yeah, it's focus because it's not fighting spirit. So she stops focus, but it's like, who cares? Like, no one is running around um, with focus that's like, oh, we have to stop them, like, dead in their tracks. And it's like, the only person you're stopping is Seaside Bologna, but Rowan has been out since forever. So, I, don't, I mean, she's, like, infinitely better to counter her anyway. Anyway, this isn't, like, this reminds me of that, where it's just, like, some weird thing that was just like, oh, we have to counter this, but it's like, why? Which does make me wonder, um, are we... And then on top of that, they just released Seaside Isaria, who gets a free soul burn without the book anyway so it's like i have no idea um, but it does make me wonder for the future like are we going to start getting more people who are like going to abuse soul burns are they going to make are they going to buff some units now um to make their soul burns better because there's a lot of units out there that actually have like one of the other things with soul burns is like they're so annoying because they're either really strong or like they're just insanely useless like if you take a look at like uh green violets uh s1 soul burn it's, it's kind of just a waste of time um yeah, so th there's that. So that's kind of the thought process there. Um, I our turn. Yeah. So let's move forward. Um, I really, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, attacks, attacks all enemies with the power. You know what would be nice though, if they change this to like a move and not a passive, and then when she activates this, she she takes you know their souls or something like that, and then gives you a random buff that'd be a pretty interesting move um would it be balanced probably not but like if the, like instead of patching this to be uh instead of patching this to be like oh it removes taga hell souls like they don't get the souls from that and then they made it so that it just takes them all i mean that's kind of the same thing right so if they're gonna patch it i feel like just turn it into a move that like she can go hits everyone takes all their souls and then grants herself an extra turn so she can do the s3 because uh, I think that'd be, for one, more fun. And for two, like, they already have the weird, like, robotic tentacle animation. So why not, like, use it? Because this way, we're never going to see that animation anymore. All we're going to see is the S3 and the S2 and the S1. But the animation's already there. Like, do something with it. Like, I don't know. It's just it's just so bad. Um, of course, we've got Apocalypse. Um, this is all right. We get the one-turn cooldown. I'm not sure uh, why we don't get any extra damage on this. Uh, I don't... Yeah, I can't really, you know... We're not getting any, like... You took off the extra damage you could have been getting on this, and then you forced us to, to like, spend, like, who knows how, this is like, this is probably close to 15 mola to get 30% chance, to get a 33% chance, to to boost this up to 100% chance, to get a 33% chance to get a good buff, right? Like, I, I just don't understand. Um, so yeah, this is not going to do that much damage, theoretically, because of the fact that you just stole a bunch of the damage off of it from molas. I mean, you could argue that they just, like, they, they took the damage that they were going to put from Molos and just like put it in there as a base, but I don't know. I mean, take it as you will. Uh, attacks on me. So this is all right. Um, at the very least, you're dropping everyone by 20%. Uh, some people who, who may not realize why it's 20 to 40 instead of just like everyone 40 or everyone 20. Uh, it's because it messes up turn order. So sometimes when you're, when you're playing your team, um, if you need a, an attack buffer or something, an attack buffer goes after your, your cleanser. If you move the whole team back and let's say you put them all, you know, you give them all um, provoke or or you put them all on uh, uh, unable to be buffed. If you put the whole team back, then the person who was supposed to cleanse that is still just going to go and cleanse before the attack buffer comes up. If you make it from 20 to 40 percent, the way it's kind of like randomly distributed like this, it could make your attack buffer go first, waste his turn, and then comes your next unit um, that's, that was supposed to cleanse to keep that from happening. Uh, and then she just like, or she or he or she just sits there and like, what am I supposed to do now, right? Uh, so theoretically, that's kind of how it works, but um, yeah. So that's kind of the idea is like to just mess up the turn order. And that's not the only uh, interaction. It's just a lot of stuff where it's like when you're playing RTA or, or, or anything, usually it's like, oh, this is my turn order. If I'm going to get Bassard, well, at least they're still in the same order. And then I can, you know, deal with it from there. Uh, but when like, when you have this 20 to 30, like, it, it basically has not only the same effect of Basar because you're only losing 10% off of his with a chance to get 10% more, um, but you're also just mixing up the whole team and that kind of messes up the turn order. It, 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 it's something that kind of reminds me of um, 
what is it? Um, Darkest Dungeon, where like the, the 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 position everyone's in matters. So when they get scrambled around, it like messes things up. That's kind of what it is here. But this is like a speed thing versus that's a positioning thing. Uh, and then finally, so she gets she provokes everyone, which is pretty interesting. Um, which is why I'm gonna probably run her on counter set. Uh, a lot of people don't want to run her on counter set; they want her on like speed or something. Um, I think the the for me those are, that's a pretty good option too. Like the three good options are probably speed, counter, and life steal. The only reason life steal is good because you. She has increased defense, and because she's a knight, she has good defensive stats, and defense scales the best out of anything with uh, lifesteal. Because if, let's say you have enough defense to reduce 50% damage as a theoretical thing. Um, it means that if you get a, like 1,000 or 2,000 HP from an attack that you're going to lifesteal, and you got 2,000 HP back, because you're taking reduced damage, it's basically like doubling your lifesteal, right? Whereas making your health bar bigger, it just makes it hard, harder to, to fill up, right? It, you know. I don't suggest running all defense, obviously, because she has health scaling. So you do still have to build her health pool up pretty high. Um, but the fact that she has defense just makes it so that it's harder. Like, it's harder. Like, when she life steals, because she has high defense, it's going to be harder to th remove the HP that she life stealed, right? So that's kind of the, the idea behind it. So life steal works better with um, high defense uh, or just any damage reduction thing in general is what's important to realize there. Um, so, yeah, like... She gives herself increased defense, which is pretty good. Um, this is on a four turn cooldown, so unfortunately, it's not going to have the defense buff up all the time. Um, but I mean, it, it is what it is. She doesn't really need like she shouldn't really need to take that many turns anyway. So we get this. Uh, this is this is the reason I wanted her. I mean, not this, but the, just the fact that she went Super Saiyan is the only reason I want her. Uh, that deck. Let's. I mean, usually people do this, and it's kind of dumb because it's not really that worthwhile. But let's see what kind of damage she did. So for some reason, I guess that Landy's on... Oh, the Landy is being protected by Crozet. Uh, so she did about, what, 3k to the to the Tenebria. It's not too not not the best, not the worst. Uh, if we were to kind of like take the damage that... The extra damage that Trozet, that Trousers is taking, put it back on, on Landy, we'd probably get around this 3400. Um, which is fine for an S3. I mean, it's, she's mainly CC and lockdown, but she's she can do some damage. Uh, so this this S1 is what we're going to look at, and this is like the bane of everyone's existence who is like having a hard time doing uh, her stage in the in the story. Um, so for one, she gets a 60, what is it, 65, uh, 55, 60, yeah, 65. So she gets 65% chance to dispel one buff, which for those of you uh, who are already like thought past this and, and have already like found someone's video on it, uh, that means that she has an AoE counter that not only works with when she gets hit, that she counter attacks. Uh, but she also you can run her on Elbrus, so she's basically a light rem. So for those of you who hate rem as it is, you're gonna we're gonna be fighting another rem. Uh, in this case, though, she rem one of rem's greatest strengths is the fact that she reduces. Um, she doesn't strip here; that strips, which is pretty good. But she reduces it by one, which is essentially stripping a lot of the time. Um, but the thing is, she can ignore effect resistance, so it, it works on everyone. Like you know, uh, high effect resistance Ruels. Uh, cans like or ML cans like anything with higher factors and she doesn't care she just strips it uh, her she's not going to be able to hit everyone but for the most people for the most part she's going to hit the people you want anyway um yeah so we're losing the incursion we're losing the incursion on the s1 it says it's an extra attack so that means she hits first and then the second one comes in and the incursion hits on top of that when used on the caster's turn, has this to activate as an extra attack. So yeah, it should be that's double your that's doubling your damage, but it only works on your turn, which is the reason why people want to build her on uh, speed to make her take more turns. Uh, but I think I mean for one, for me, this incursion thing is kind of lame because you're gonna build her on speed and then you're gonna lose the thirty five percent constantly, right? So what do you, like you're gonna build her on speed and you're gonna get if we if you build her on counter, you're gonna you know do your S three and then maybe do your and then probably do your S one, right? Like you'll you'll cycle around to do your S one naturally without counterattacking. If you build it on speed, what are you gonna do? S three, S one, and then maybe another S one, and you're probably gonna lose both of the thirty five percent chances. And you know your speed set could have been better used on someone else who would have had an effect. Uh, those two extra turns that she that she just basically did nothing but stand there like an idiot. Um, and not to mention you're also running out. You're also like um, wearing out your defense buff faster, which who cares like why wouldn't you want to just like slow her down so that's why we're running on counter set life still seems kind of interesting but for now um, i'm probably just gonna keep her on counter set so we're not gonna get the incursion but 
based on like the way it is now, that's already pretty good because you're stripping people. Like if she's gonna if you're gonna build her on counter, she's gonna be slow, and then people are gonna hit you. She's gonna hit them with counter attacks because you're you're running on her Albris, which means that she's stripping everyone. So when it's her turn to finally do her S three, which should be like at the end because she's slow. Uh, eventually, she's just gonna like get all her all her debuffs and everything from the S three. Not not debuffs, but she's she's just gonna come back around, provoke everyone for one. Now they're provoked, so they're gonna hit her. So her counter attack set is infinitely more useful. Um, but also, she's gonna reduce their CR and everything, and then just mess them all up. Right? She's gonna scramble them. Um, so that's why I kind of think counter set is really just better anyway. Uh, and then you know when it's her turn, then she can activate incursion. But incursion is kind of stupid. I really do think. This needs to be increased to at least fifty percent because if you're gonna if you're gonna waste an entire good speed set on her, um, to get this incursion, it needs to be higher than thirty five percent because that's too low. Uh, but anyway, so I guess if you if you want to build her for incursion, then you get uh, a few extra goodies. So you get to decrease their speed and hit chance for one turn, um, which isn't too bad. But I, I do think that like this this all they need to remove is this when used on the caster's turn, right? So all they need to do is take that off and it's suddenly good. Like she can S1 and then she's got a 35% chance. Like if you're going to keep the chance so low, maybe drop it down to 20% chance, right? And make it just whenever she does S1, she gets this extra attack. There's a 20% chance to get this extra attack. I think that'll make her good. Like that by itself would probably make her so good. You could just erase her S2, just have an S2 that's blank. And she's still going to be like, she's going to be as good as you want her to be. The, the, the problem right now is she's not very good because her S2 is basically worthless. Um, her S3 is kind of good, and her S1 is also just kind of good, right? Like, Ram just does this better. Like, it's just kind of sad for a, um, for a, what's it called? Now, you can soul burn, right? You can soul burn to, to on her turn when it's her turn because she's if she's slow, if you're running her on fast, that's, a, you know, who knows whether you get the souls in time. But if you're running her slow, by the time she actually cycles back around to do her S1 for the first time, you could probably soul burn it. Uh, which I think would be pretty good because then you do get the, the decreased speed and hit chance. But I think the fact that it's only one turn uh, kind of just makes that, to me, again, just dumb again. Like, all I'm going to use her for is another rem. Now, we'll see how the meta adjusts to her and, and, and how, like, the, the actual build ends up being. But I think most people are just going to run her on counter set. Um, and they're probably eventually going to buff her or, like, change a few things to just am amplify that style. Um, but, yeah. Uh, what else were we going to look at? Yeah, so that's about it. I mean, that was just the main... Uh, I think... I wonder if they show the incursion. I don't remember. I think the incursion should be like... She lasers and then the, the little tentacles come out. Because, like I said, I just, it just bothers me. They have all this... They, they put all this time and resource into this animation and they're not going to use it. So she does this. Oh, I think incursion is just that extra laser. Yeah, so I think it does that maybe. Oh, no. Okay, this is incursion. Okay, cool. So she's pretty interesting, um, just at a basic level. She can strip into speed down and blind, but the problem is it's like... Oh wow, that looks pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The problem is it's just like her S2 is so underwhelming that they really need... Like if you're going to make her... If all she's good for is the S1, because the S3 is also just kind of like... Oh, it does things, right? Like, Let's go back to the S3. Again, like while this is pretty good... Um, she doesn't really do a whole lot that like Basar can't do. Like I'm not gonna run her to get the CR reduction. Uh, the provoke usually is better with um, if you want like a first turn provoke like this. Uh, usually just just bring a fallen or regular regular Cecilia, fire Cecilia, uh, or what's her name, uh, blue Tenebria. Uh, so so the first two parts of this are kind of eh, and then she gets a defense buff, which is also kind of eh. So, like I said, she's not bad, and I think, you know, I'm probably going to summon for her, and I think probably everyone else is going to summon for her as well, right? Um, and just kind of look at, see how she comes out, but I don't think she's a must-pull, like, immediately. Especially because not only, I mean, we have been dealing with, um, what's her name? With Rem for so much that, like, people are kind of used to this, like, bring in a counter unit that just AoEs everyone and constantly destroys them. Uh, we've been dealing with that so much that, you know, people are playing around that now. Uh, one of the interesting things about her is that, like, we're Rem. The thing with Ram is that, like, you can just bring Violet and she dies. Like, he, he can just one-shot her with his S3 most of the time. Uh, with her, he can't do that. And you're also kind of, like, it's hard to... She doesn't have as many counters as Ram does because Ram's green. Because then Ram, you could just bring, um, like, Tenebria or you could just bring... Um, what, what's her name? Landy or something like that. Um, and those counters apply to Bellion, too. But the thing is, Bellion is so tanky that, like... 
she can kind of ignore that. She can like, cause no one's bringing Tenebria and Landy into the same comp. And if they do bring them into the same comp, uh, you messed up in your draft. So you're, you're going to lose that no matter what, like nine times out of 10. And you, you deserve to lose that if you let them take both of those. Um, but if you're only running one of each, which, you know, you're often going to face, that still leaves three other units who can trigger her. And because she AOE, she's still going to hit. Like, Landy, a lot of time people bring Landy into um, Rem, and I really don't care because Rem still just slaughters her, right? Like, it's not that big a deal. Like, if they're focusing on, and if, like, like take Landy, like, like Landy's S1 still triggers, uh, but, like, take uh, Spectre Tenebria. Spectre Tenebria is wasting her turn trying to kill Rem. That leaves my other units in a good position to, like, do what they need to. So you need to work on your draft and stuff like that. But um, the thing with Bellion is, like I said, so Landy doesn't really counter uh, Rem that much. And Rem still just dumpsters her, which, if we're looking at it from the other side, we can bring Bellion into the same scenarios. And she's still going to, like, not be that influenced by Landy anyway. Um, so there you go. That's, that's kind of, like, my point there. So... I think she's going to be not better than Rem, but a uh, pretty good alternative. Pretty strong, I think. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the bottom line of, of, of what of what I think about her. Um, she's got a lot of CC. Like I said, the incursion's decent, but with such a low chance, I really do think they need to take off the when it's her turn. Because if, it, like I said, if you're going to build her for speed, you're, you're just wasting so much speed gear to get a, to get like 35 percented. And other that, either that or you're just wasting a soul burn on her S1 to just like get a few debuffs on. Um, yeah, like if you want, like, they're also very synergistic because, or non-synergistic, the buffs you get. So you get speed down and you get blind. Um when you give them speed down, it means that they're not going to take their turn as fast, which means the blind isn't very useful, right? Like, if you blind someone for two turns and they take two turns and they're blinded, I mean, you just waste the two of their turns. Um, so it's good against, like, faster units. But if you if you speed someone down, I mean, it's like they're already going to die before they get to go off, so the blind was a waste, right? So it's, it's kind of like... It's an interesting point. Like, that's why one of the things... if You have to kind of, like, look at synergistic buffs... Uh, so one of the things that, like, you know, take a Tywin, for example. A Tywin's so strong because uh, speed down synergizes unbelievably well with stun, right? Because they're stunned for a whole turn, and they're slow. So they have to wait to take their turn, and then they take their turn, but they're stunned. And then they have to wait to take another turn after that to actually take their turn. So you're basically stealing almost two turns from them. Um, so that's kind of what the speed, that's, you know, with that. But here it's just kind of thrown in there as, like, a, well, speed is pretty strong. Let's give them that, and then... We have to give her another one, but we don't want to give her anything too strong. Um, so they're obviously not going to give her a stun on the S1 because that'd be kind of overpowered. But um, just like something other than the um, something other than the blind would have been good. Um, maybe not. Maybe not a silence. That that also feels like it's going a bit far. But uh, yeah. The other thing that I wanted to mention was people were kind of hoping she would counter um, New Angelica. I think I said it at the beginning that they were doing that, and you know now we've looked at the whole character and everything. She really just doesn't do anything to <laughs> New Angelica. So. Uh, for those of you who hate the meta currently because of New Angelica, uh, be prepared to just suffer through more of that because uh, we're not going to get the counter for a while because the the banners coming up next also have nothing to do with her. Um, like we're getting Landy, Luna, and I forgot who, a bunch of other ones. I think we're getting Tenebria again. Um, and yeah, so. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really all there is to it. Uh, hopefully, if you guys p decide to pull on her, good luck. Um, for those of you who are spending all your mystics on uh, New Angelica, I wish you luck. I don't, not sure how worth it it is, just because I feel like at some point we're just gonna get a counter to her. But if not, I mean, you know, enjoy your like several months. I mean, how long did it take to get like real counters to SSB, right? So like, you know, you're gonna have at least maybe three to six months of like abusing this unit, and then they're gonna release a counter, and it's gonna be kind of mild, um, and then and then they're gonna finally just release a, sh release a shutdown. Um, so yeah, just. If you know, if it's between if it's between New Angelica and Belion, um that's that decision's up to you and you, but for me I wouldn't I, I would go with Belion just because I don't have like New Angelica gear. Like if you can't get a new Angelica up to like two eighty speed, then I feel like you're not ready to have her. And if you if you take her, I mean you're gonna do good against like you know, lower level people, but like anything is good against lower level people and, and against higher level people your new Angelica's not gonna do anything. Uh, unless, you know, you really believe that she's good enough to, like, you know, face off against tiers ahead of you. So if you're, like, a champion RTA player, you think New Angelica's going to get you to, like, still dumpster. Even with your mediocre gear, you're still going to, 
dumpster uh, legend players, then by all means, you know, if if you know, whatever you can, whatever you can get that'll help you beat legend players or help you punch above your your weight, by all means, right. And if you guys think she's that strong, then I then <laughs> do it. Uh, but I don't really think she's that strong. So if it's between summoning one or the other, I probably go with Belion, just because I have gear and I like all these counter units. Um, I know it's kind of like it's kind of toxic, but like, hey, listen, I don't run a counter arbiter villager, so. I am allowed to run regular counter units uh, whenever I want. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, hopefully, whoever decides to summon on her, you guys have uh, decent luck. Uh, she's coming with ox slots. With for a lot of people, you need ox slots. Um, most of us already have like four or five ox slots. Um, but uh, yeah, for any of you, you know, ox slots is very strong. It's it's kind of rare that we got something so strong with. Um, a new ML5. Usually they just get, kind of give you something weird and like not that good. Um, like New Angelica, like take New Angelica for example. They gave they gave you her and then they gave you Spez and just like nobody cares about Spez. Spez hasn't been relevant since forever. Um, but yeah. Uh, I might make another video today or probably tomorrow, just some RTA. And then um, I've been wanting to do like unit reviews or like how to fix units. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, not that I'm like the best at this game or like I'm like the best game designer or anything so I don't mean to imply that it's just you know how, some some interesting thoughts I think would be kind of fun to see um, but yeah so good luck to everyone out there and hopefully uh, on the 30th if you want her you can get her but see how that goes